to the upward dog, downward dog, and jump from downward facing dog, taking the legs around the arms. If that's too difficult, then instead you would jump the feet forward toward the hands, bend the arms, and take the legs on top of the arms. Now, strong legs lifting, Titibhasana, the insect position, breathing deep. That's already three breaths. Ideally, the arms would be straight. If they need to be bent, that's fine. Work toward it. And five. Now, take the feet toward the floor. Take your hands to the ankles and pull the chest through with the knees bent. Now, take your hands back over the thighs, clasping the hands behind your back. Pull the chest through. If you can't clasp your hands, that's okay. Just work the arms against the legs. Now try straightening the legs and lifting. This is Titipasana B position. Strong breathing. That's one. Two, you're really using the thighs. Three, focus on the breath. Four. And five. Now the next phase of Titipasana, you're actually walking and use your breath. As you inhale, lift the foot and exhale and lower it. Five steps forward, that's three, four, and five. And then walking backwards, one, two, three, four, five steps. Now release the hands from behind the back. Bend your knees, take the heels toward each other and reach the hands around the outside of the ankles and wrapping around into the front, pulling the head through and breathing deep. That's two, three, four, and five. Release once again, lift to Titibhasana, move back through Bakasana, jumping back and lifting through Upward Dog, downward facing dog and jump forward to a kneeling position. Space your elbows by grabbing them with your hands and take the hands out in front, palms down, fingers spread wide. Now straighten your legs. We're moving into Pincha Mayurasana, feather of the peacock. Ideally you want to jump both feet up or one foot at a time if you need to. If you can't go all the way up, you might practice with the feet against the wall and breathe deep. Otherwise, both feet are extending straight up. The body is tall. The arms are strong. That's three, four, and five. Now, the method to come out of this is to just fall straight down with the feet moving the hands back under the shoulders, and then moving through your upward dog and your downward dog. If that's too much to crash straight down like that, you might bend the knees and come down with the feet first. Either way, you would then move through your vinyasa and from the downward facing dog position, again, you would jump back forward to your knees. Once again, placing the arms in the same position and jumping back up, just like you're doing Pincha Mayurasana. But now we're preparing for Karandavasana, taking the feet into lotus position. You can do this without a lotus, but it's actually harder. It's best if you can get your lotus while you're up in Pincha Mayurasana position. Then lowering the legs, bringing the knees down toward the armpits, to go down, you must lift up. So as you lower the knees, keep lifting. Even after the knees are in the armpits, you must not give in to the downward pull. Keep lifting so that when it comes time to come up at the count of five, you can lift up. That's already four and five. And now keep that lift and come all the way up, follow it up, take the feet out of lotus, and then come down, follow your vinyasa, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. And now before we move on to the next posture, I'm going to give you an alternative to try for, for this one because it's quite difficult. So if you can't jump up to Pincha Mayurasana and move your feet into lotus, here's something else you can do. Jump all the way through to a sitting position. From there, place your legs into lotus position. Now take your hands in front 
and take the elbows down and see if you can lift the knees onto the arms. And that will give you a good feel of what it's like to move into the posture. So try it from that angle after you've attempted the other method. Okay, now move through your vinyasa again, jumping back, upward dog, downward dog. This time from down dog, don't come back to the floor. You're coming all the way forward up to a standing position. So jump forward, look up, exhale, lower the head, inhale, standing all the way up, exhale, arms to your sides. Now inhale, take the feet about six inches apart. And then exhale, arms to the sides. Now inhale, take your arms up. As you exhale, you fold forward with the palms up, taking the hands down between the feet. Then inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, jump back as though you're doing a vinyasa. Then inhale, lift upward dog. Exhale to the downward dog position. Now jump forward into a kneeling position with the knees outside the arms. Bend the elbows. Move the elbows way back toward the pubis bone, as far toward the center of your body as you can. That's the key to success in Mayurasana. Now take the feet back, feet together. Push forward until the feet come off the floor. Keep the elbows close together and as far toward the pubis as you can and breathe deep. That's two. Lift the chest. Three. Strong breathing, four and five. Then come down and lift. Upward dog, downward dog, and jump forward with the hands remaining in the same position. Look up, exhale, lower the head. Inhale, come all the way up. As you exhale, take the feet together and your arms to your sides. Now we move through a vinyasa. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms forward. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, take the feet back. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. And coming down into Nakrasana position. The key to Nakrasana is using the fingers and hands like springs. You want to push off with every finger and every toe and using the arms and the hips to lift each time that you jump. So now we're going to move five jumps forward and five jumps back. Now, one, two, three, four, five hops forward. And now, one, two, three, four, five hops back. Move through your vinyasa. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. Then jump forward. Inhale, look up. Exhale, lower your head. Inhale, come all the way back up, hands touch. Exhale, arms to your sides. And we're now ready for Vatyanasana. With an inhale, lift the right foot and bring it toward the upper left thigh. Then reach behind your back, clasping the foot with the same hand. Raise the left hand with an inhale, then exhale as you fold forward, release the right hand, take both hands down to the floor. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, jump back, moving through a vinyasa. Keep the right knee away from the floor. Now lift the chest with an inhale, exhale back. Now jump forward with the left foot. Now ideally, you take the right knee down close to the left heel, and then the right arm over the left. Extend and look up. Vatyanasana, the horse posture. If that's too much to have the right foot in half lotus, you would leave the right foot on the floor and extend in this way, lifting up with the right knee down. Otherwise, the right foot is in half lotus, the right knee down on the floor, and you're lifting and breathing deep. And that's three, four, and five. Now release the pose on that side by jumping back, moving through an entire vinyasa with the right foot still in half lotus, and then changing when you reach the downward facing dog, releasing the right foot, lifting the left foot into half lotus, moving through a vinyasa by lowering to the floor, keeping the left knee off the floor, lift upward dog, downward dog, jump forward, lowering the left knee. Remember, if that's too much to keep the left foot in half lotus, then release it and leave the foot down. Otherwise, the left foot's in half lotus, the left knee is down, the left arm is above 
the right arm and you're extending and looking up. That's full deep breathing. And that should already be about three breaths. Strong breathing. Four. And five. Now release the pose from that side in the same way, taking the hands down, jumping back, moving through upward dog, downward dog, jumping forward, we're coming out the same way we went in, reach back behind the back with the left hand, lower the head as you exhale, inhale, come all the way up, bend that supporting leg a bit, all the way up, straighten it as you rise, and then release both hands and the feet together. And we move through another vinyasa now, inhale, take the arms up, Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, look up. Exhale, take the feet back. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And we're jumping into Parigrasana by taking the right leg outside the right arm, left leg outside the left arm. The right foot is bent back behind. Extend forward, far out with the left hand, rolling the left shoulder against the inner left knee taking the left foot with the right hand and then coming across with the left hand toward the foot and breathing deep. Keep rolling the chest open toward the sky. That should already be two breaths. Three, use that left shoulder against the inner left knee to help roll open. Four and five. With an inhale, come up. As you exhale, jump back from that position and move through upward dog and downward dog and come all the way forward into the same position this time with the left leg bent back the right leg straight come across with the right arm extend far out so that you can take that right shoulder against the inner right knee reach over with the left hand taking the right foot and then the right hand comes over to the foot and you use your shoulder to help roll open and to lengthen the spine and breathe deep. That's already three, four, and five. We release Parigrasana by coming up and jumping back and moving through upward dog and downward facing dog and then jumping forward with the right leg over the top of the left or Gomukhasana, the cow face posture, working the ankles close together and then sitting back toward the heels. Then take both hands forward, clasp the right knee, use that to pull the chest through and roll the shoulders down the back. Breathe deep. That's two, three, four, and five, full deep breathing. Now, take the right arm up and the left arm behind and clasp your hands. This is still Gomukhasana, the same side, but now we're engaging the arms in another way and breathing deep. That's two, three, the gaze is up at the third eye, four, And five. Now release that side by taking the hands down to the floor, moving through a vinyasa, jumping back, and lifting upward dog and downward dog and jumping forward into the pose with the left leg over the top of the right. Take the heels close together. Take the hands toward the left knee. Use that to pull the chest through and lengthen the spine and breathe deep. That's two, three, full breathing, four, and five. Once again, we're engaging the arms in another way. So you take them up, left arm lifting up, Right arm coming behind the back, clasping the hands together. If you can't quite reach the hands, that's okay. Work toward it over time. Wherever you are, be happy, but breathe deep. That's three, four, and five. Release the arms. Take the hands down toward the floor. Move through your vinyasa, jumping back, lifting to upward dog 
and downward facing dog and jumping all the way through and rolling back onto your back for Supta Urdhva Parvarajasana. Take the right foot into half lotus. Reach behind the back toward the right foot. Use the left hand to assist to pull that right hand around and to bring the foot closer to it. If you can't quite reach, that's okay. Work toward it over time. The left hand reaches toward the left foot. Grab the big toe. Now you're going to roll up. As you do so, the grip changes so the hands clasp the toes. You bend the leg back as you roll up. The right hand is still holding the right foot. The left hand comes across and presses into the floor outside that right knee. As you're twisting, you're looking up over the right shoulder and breathing deep. That should already be three breaths. Full breathing. Four. Keep a spiraling motion in the spine. And five. Now release the pose. Jump back. Follow your vinyasa, upward dog, downward facing dog position, and come all the way through, roll back onto your back again. This time the left foot comes across, take the left arm back behind the back. See if you can grab that left foot. If not, that's okay. The right hand reaches toward the right foot, grab the big toe, and as you inhale, roll up, bend the right foot back, Come down, keep holding with the left hand, reach the right hand across, press the outer palm into the floor outside the left knee. Use that to help pull the spine around in a spiraling motion and you're looking back over the left shoulder and breathing deep. That should already be three breaths, four, and five. Inhale, look to the front, exhale, release and take your vinyasa, jumping back, moving through upward dog, downward dog, and now jumping forward into a kneeling position in preparation for the seven headstands. The first group of them is Bada Asta Shirshasana and the next group Mukha Asta Shirshasana. First, space the elbows apart. Then, take the arms, forward, lacing the fingers together and taking the top of your head toward the floor. This is the first headstand in the series. Now straighten the legs, walk the feet toward the head, and take the feet up. If you need to bend the knees to do that, do so. Otherwise the legs go up straight and breathe deep. That's one. As usual in headstand, the weight should be supported primarily by the arms with the head taking some of the weight, but not all of it. That's already three, four, full deep breathing, and five. Now the method to come out of this is to fall straight down, hands back, and lower. If that's too much to just come falling straight down like that, you could bend the knees, taking the feet down a bit more slowly, and then moving through your vinyasa. Upward dog, downward dog, and then again jumping forward to a kneeling position. And for the second one, we cross the arms in front of the face, taking the head to the floor. Then straighten the legs, walk the feet toward the head, and once again move into the headstand position. There's a bit more weight on the head this time, but there is still weight coming across the arms and the elbows. Breathe deep. That's already two breaths. Hold it. Three. Four. Five. Now the method to come down from here is the same as the other. You either release and fall straight down and then move through upward dog and downward dog or if you need to bend the knees and come down, that's fine. But from the downward dog, we come forward Again, into a kneeling position in preparation for the third of Bhattasta Shirshasana. We take the arms parallel to one another, place the head down on the floor in between. It's almost as though we're preparing for Pinchamayadasana, but the head stays on the floor. Then, once again, the legs straighten and you move up. Breathe deep. That's one. 
Keep some weight in the arms. Two, don't let the elbows go too far apart. Three, four, and five. The same method of coming out, moving down, upward dog, and then downward dog, once again coming forward to the knees. Now, the fourth one, the fingertips come onto the shoulders. The elbows remain on the floor and the head is on the floor. From here, we once again straighten the legs, moving up to a headstand position. It's three points now between the elbows and the head and the breath is full and deep. That's one, two, three, full breathing, four, and five. Once again, coming down the same method and moving through your vinyasa, upward dog, downward dog, and coming to the knees. Now we're ready for the first of Mukhasta Shirshasana. The hands come out in a three-point headstand. So you have your head, and the palms touching the floor. Now, from here once again, you straighten the legs and move into a headstand position. You should have an equilateral triangle between the hands and head and breathe deep. That's two, three, four, and one more, five. Taking the feet down in whichever method is appropriate for you, moving through your vinyasa, upward dog, downward dog, and again coming forward to the knees. Now the next one is to take the arms straight out in front of the face, palms up, the back of the hands pressing down. Now lift all the way up into the headstand position, keep some weight pressing into the back of the hands, Arms are straight and strong, and the breath is full. The hands are about shoulders width apart, maybe slightly wider in this one, and the breath is full. That should already be three. Strong breathing, four, five. Now come down in the usual manner and move through your vinyasa with an upward dog, downward facing dog, and the final headstand, number seven, is another Mukhasta Shirshasana, this time the head coming down onto the floor and the hands straight out to the sides, this time palms down. Once again, you move up to the headstand position and breathe deep. This one is the most challenging of the seven as far as the balance, you have the most weight on your head. Focus, the weight should be on the center of the top of your head, not too far toward the forehead. You want to keep the neck straight. That's four and five. Move through your vinyasa by coming down and lifting upward dog and downward facing dog. And you're now ready to move into your finishing sequence. And we're now ready to move in to the first posture of third series, Vishvamitrasana. From the downward facing dog position, come forward into a push-up position. From there, you want to roll over onto the right foot with the left foot on top of the right foot. Remove your left hand from the floor and take it to the hip. Turn your gaze up. Now raise the left foot Grab the big toe and lift. If that's too much to do with the straight leg, then bend the left knee, grab the toe, and straighten it. Now, if either of those are too much, you would just leave that left hand on the left hip. Otherwise, you're holding the left foot, the leg is straight, and you're breathing deep. That should already be about two breaths. Three, four, and five. You would now release the left foot, lower it, take the left hand down, roll over to a push-up position, move through your vinyasa, upward dog, downward dog. Rolling over onto the other side now. 
You're supporting with the left hand, the right hand on the right hip. Raise the foot in whichever method was appropriate for you. Try to remain broad across the shoulders and breathe deep. That's one, two, three, four, five. And lower the foot. Take both hands down to the floor. Move through your vinyasa again, moving through your upward dog and your downward dog, and coming forward to Vashishtasana. Step the right foot outside the right hand. Bend the right knee. Take the elbow far under on the outside of that right foot. Now take the right foot away from the floor, taking the weight onto the right arm, then remove the left hand from the floor and look up. Full deep breathing. That's one, two, three, the gaze is up at the left hand, four, and five. Now take the left hand to the floor, raise the left foot up and breathe deep. That's one, two, three, deep breathing, four, hold it, one more breath, and five. Now release this by jumping back and moving through your vinyasa, that's upward dog, downward dog, stepping forward with the left foot outside the left hand. Bend the elbow, take the shoulder under, take the weight onto the arm, lift the left foot off the floor, extend up with the right hand and your gaze turns up to the right and the breath is full and deep. That's one, two, three, four, and five. Take the right hand down to the floor, lift the back foot so both feet are off the floor now, and keep breathing deep. That's one, two, three, four, and five. Release. Take your vinyasa once again, jumping back from that position and then lifting upward dog, downward dog, and coming back through to sitting. We're ready for five leg behind the head positions, beginning first with kashyapasana. Take the knee behind the shoulder, lift, and then take the leg across behind the head. You should be proficient at leg behind the head if you plan on practicing third series. Now lie down on your back, Palms in the chest and breathe deep. That's one, two, full breathing. Three, extend forward with the left leg. Four, and five.